In Hebrews 4, the author used the history of ancient Israel as a warning to Christians to remain faithful to the gospel. But if you aren't familiar with the Old Testament, you won't understand his analogy and what it means for Christians today. We need to start at the beginning. In Genesis 1 and 2, God created Adam and Eve on the sixth day, placed them in the Garden of Eden, and rested on the seventh day. On that first Sabbath, humanity had a close relationship with their Creator. They were in paradise and had access to the tree of eternal life. Then they sinned and lost it all. God banished them from the garden, cursed the ground with weeds and thorns, cut off their access to the tree of eternal life, and sentenced them to death. If they had obeyed, they could have enjoyed God's rest for eternity, but now they had to work hard every day and eat their bread by the sweat of their brow until they grew old and finally died. Things looked bleak, but God had a plan to save humanity. He used Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to establish the nation of Israel. But the Israelites moved to Egypt during a famine and lost their freedom. God delivered them from Egyptian slavery, brought them to Mount Sinai, and promised to give them rest in a land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy 12, verse 10. But you will cross the Jordan and settle in the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and he will give you rest from all your enemies around you, so that you will live in safety. But Israel lacked faith and constantly disobeyed, so God made them wander for 40 years until that generation died in the wilderness. Psalm 95, verse 7. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massah, in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me. They tried me, though they had seen what I did. For forty years I was disgusted with that generation. I said, They are a people whose hearts go astray. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they will not enter my rest. Then Joshua conquered the Canaanites, and Israel enjoyed rest from their enemies for a time. So the Sabbath became a weekly reminder of God's deliverance from Egyptian slavery and his promise to give them rest in the land of Canaan. In Deuteronomy 5, verse 15, Moses wrote, Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That is why the Lord your God has commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Centuries later, Jesus Christ restored access to the tree of eternal life and the eternal Sabbath in paradise with God. In Matthew 11, verse 28, he said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So the Exodus symbolically pictures Jesus Christ redeeming Christians from bondage to sin and death. And the conquest of Canaan pictures the second coming of Jesus when Christians will inherit eternal life and eternal rest in the kingdom of God. Now that we understand what the Torah teaches about the first Sabbath in the Garden of Eden and God's promise to give Israel rest, we can understand what the author of Hebrews meant. Hebrews 4 verse 1 Therefore, while the promise to enter his rest remains, let us fear that none of you should miss it. For we also have received the good news just as they did. But the message they heard did not benefit them, since they were not united with those who heard it in faith. For we who have believed enter the rest, in keeping with what he has said. So I swore in my anger they will not enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the foundation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in this way. 
and on the seventh day God rested from all his works. Hebrews is talking about the rest of eternal salvation that God offered to humanity in the Garden of Eden and then lost because of sin. God offered Israel rest in the promised land and they also lost it because of sin. Now God is offering humanity a second chance to have the rest of eternal salvation if we have faith. In Hebrews 4 verse 3, he says that we Christians who have believed the gospel enter the rest. He uses the present tense for the verb enter to show that this is a present reality. Hebrews 4 verse 5, again in that passage he says, they will never enter my rest. Since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news did not enter because of disobedience, again he specifies a certain day, today, speaking through David after such a long time, as previously stated. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Hebrews 4 verse 8, For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. Therefore, a Sabbath rest remains for God's people. For the person who has entered his rest has rested from his own works, just as God did from his. In Hebrews 4 verse 9, the author of Hebrews uses the Greek term sabbatismos to say that Christians should continue to keep the weekly Sabbath because it pictures something greater than mere physical rest. The new covenant doesn't abolish the Sabbath. It gives the Sabbath greater meaning and significance. In Hebrews 4 verse 10, he uses a physical spiritual analogy to say that resting on the Sabbath from our secular labor pictures repentance from our former unconverted behavior. When we keep the Sabbath, we declare that Jesus Christ has restored our access to the tree of eternal life and fellowship with God in paradise that humanity enjoyed on that first Sabbath when God rested from his creative work. When we keep the Sabbath, we also celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb, has redeemed us from Egyptian bondage to sin and death. He delivers us from the satanic Pharaoh who enslaves all unbelievers. When we keep the Sabbath, we also declare that Joshua's conquest of Canaan pictures the second coming of Jesus Christ when Christians will enjoy an eternal Sabbath rest in the kingdom of God. Therefore, the weekly Sabbath is a prophecy, a foretaste of the eternal Sabbath rest we will enjoy with God in his kingdom. Hebrews 4 verse 11, let us then make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall into the same pattern of disobedience. This brief study is further evidence that the Torah is God's basic definition of right and wrong for all humanity. Jesus expected his disciples to teach and keep the Mosaic law, and the apostles affirmed the authority of the Torah throughout the New Testament. So the law of Moses is still relevant as a guide for proper Christian behavior.